Big win, Don Wilson, here for Top MMA News. Here with Rec President Nick Castiglia. And, you know, just days out from the event, how is everything coming together? Man, it's uh, it's always a, a fight until the end, you know. Uh, always pushing for more ticket sales, just trying to pack the house, make everybody happy and have some great fights. Well, speaking of great fights, this card is pretty much stacked top to bottom. And, you know, one of, one of my biggest favorites on this has to be Remy Morvin, Mike Riley, both making their, I guess, flyweight debut. You know, um, you know, what what made you guys put a flyweight fight on this card? Well, you know, there. To be honest, people have been asking for it. You know, Mike uh, has been asking for that weight for a while now, and uh, same with his coach Jeremy and uh, Remy. You know, wants to fight at that weight as well. So we were like, let's make it happen. You know. Remy has is definitely gonna have a challenge to make it down there, and uh, you know Mike, I, Mike I know won't, you know he usually walks, he walks around, around, but, around there. Yeah. yeah, so it should be a really it should be a really really exciting fight. You know? Now, are you are you planning maybe on, on bringing uh, you know more flyweights in? Maybe you know looking to maybe cement a flyweight division, flyweight title down the road. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Perfect. With the UFC coming out with that division, hopefully soon, it'd be great to see some Canadian prospects in there. So from the little guys up to the big guys, Lee Mean, Hollis Gracie, I got to say, you know, that's going to be probably the best three-minute fight that we've seen in a long time. You know, how did, the, how did that fight come together? Because it, it is pretty odd. You know, you got, you got Lee Mean, you know, Canada legend. We know we love you, Lee. Sub-500 fighter against, you know, Hollis Gracie, UFC veteran. How did you put that one together? You know what? I have to credit that to uh, Alex Caparici. You know, he's he's the man behind all the matches. And I find, actually, he probably doesn't get enough credit, but he's the guy who you'd have to speak to about that. He lined all that up, and, uh, you know, with the extra help of some close friends like Pat Cooligan, you know, with his contacts with the Gracie family. And, uh, you know, I know Alex and Lee work together regularly on several different shows. And, you know, Lee's worked with us, too, and has always been great to work with us. I like Lee. He's a great guy, very nice guy. And uh, you know what? It just all came together, and I'm and I'm happy it came together <laughs> on our card. You know, it's gonna be huge. You know, what I mean, uh, you know, Gracie's are pretty much the mega family of MMA, but I gotta say, the means are the Canadian family of MMA. So that should be a great fight, fans. If you are in the Ottawa area, hell, if you're in Toronto and the surrounding area, get your butt down here because if not, you're silly. And uh, you know, let's let's go to the the, the co-main event because really this this fight interests me a lot. Yeah, the, the Ninja Love Nick Denny finally making his return, um, going up against Nick Mamlet you know for a shot at your bantamweight title now held by uh is it uh, john frazier yep yep you know so let, let, let's go a little let's take a little step back here ian loveland was your original uh bantamweight champion nick denny was supposed to have that fight got injured it was uh xavier deroche that stepped in um so now you know nick denny's got to do another kind of title elimination why did you choose to go that way instead of going straight to the title shot hmm. actually yeah. what happened was our show had to be changed yeah. from our date in Ottawa, which we'll get to after. Yeah, get to that. John Frazier could not compete at this time. You know, uh, definitely that was option number yeah. one, you know, give him that fight. But we couldn't make it happen. Saw so Mamalis, you know, I helped the score with their show when uh, Mamalis fought Wooly. Yeah, big win over Adrian Wooly. Saw him, I was like, holy cow, this guy's a real deal, you know? And I said, you know, actually, John Fraser yeah. after the fight came up to me, and he's like, "I want to fight that guy." <laughs> you know, so and this is Nick Denny's hometown. He's a, he's super successful. You know, it just that's the way it unfolded. Unfortunately, John couldn't be here to fight at this show, but this is just the way it came together. And you know what? This is going to be a great fight. This, this will be a great fight, and the winner of this fight who fights Haggis Basher is going to be a great fight. Well, yeah, right there, you're really you're really helping us out with our rankings in this one. We had Nick Denny, who was close to our number one bantamweight, had to take him off. He's been act inactive for a year. Adrian Woolley stepped up to the number two spot. He lost to Nick Manless, so now you're, you, know, you just got a bunch of revolving chairs around there. You got John Frazier into the mix. Really, the winner of the John Frazier versus the winner of either Nick is going to be Canada's number one bantamweight, and that's what we love to see, fans. You know that. You know. And now let, let, let's get to the main event because everyone's really salivating at this. You know, Nabil Khatib, his hometown, where he's a legend, going up against Nathan Gunn, who's been around everywhere, huge run in the MFC before a little falter, came back, beautiful win over Lindsey Hawks at the last show. You know, they're going for the uh, is it the inaugural rec uh, welterweight title? Yes. Yeah, so there we go. You know, another, another belt there. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that fight? Because that is going to be a barn burner. Man, that fight 
could be anybody's fight. You know, I've seen... Uh, One sec. That is my rookie mistake, folks. That's completely my rookie mistake. <laughs> you know, I've seen Nabil fight some tough fights and come out and take guys out and come back from when people thought he was out. Yep. You know, Gunn, I, all I know of him is what I saw last fight. <laughs> and holy... He hits hard. Holy blank. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, uh, he's a powerhouse. You know, for sure you're going to see fireworks. I don't see it going five rounds. I can't say who I see winning, but I can definitely say I don't see it going five rounds, that's for sure. Well, see, I, I, sadly, I was a guy that predicted it would go five rounds. Jeez, I am really bad at this, folks. i got to say I apologize. Um, you know, now let's, uh, let, let's talk about the big question because all, 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 the, all the folks really want to know. When, after the last event, we were talking about the next show is going to be in Ottawa. It's going to be the Civic Center. It's going to be your homecoming. We're back at, you know, the beautiful Casino Lac Lemmy. What's with the change of venue? Okay, so Ontario gets MMA. Yeah. Everybody starts throwing in their licenses. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody who shouldn't be, too. How many cancellations? This is on the heel, folks, of the Global Warriors cancellation, I might add. And, uh, you know, a lot of people came to many of the guys who are running shows in Quebec. You know, a lot of the faces you see around already. Alex Caparici, me, people are talking to Robin Black. You know, any show in Ontario, you would see most of us were there, you know, for some reason or another. You know, a couple of shows I went in and helped with on some level or another, and I was talking to everybody, and people were losing money. Like, we're talking about 30, 40, 50, you know, large. We're talking about big yeah, dollars. That's, that's not small pocket change you're losing. And, like, and just, like, just the expense, and you know what? You can ask Ken Ayashi himself. Yeah. Just the expense to just be in Ontario is bam, an extra 35G already. Extra 35. Do you have an exact idea where that 35 goes or they just say that's what you need to pay? 17,000 yeah. goes right off the bat to your knockout fees. All right. Okay, so, which is for the medicals, yeah. for the fighters. You know, I understand that. But then there's another larger portion, significant yeah. amount of money that also gets dispersed amongst the Ontario Commission. Hotels, food for them, flights yeah. for them, you know, if it's a certain ref, they get paid this much. If it's another ref, they get paid this much. Which, you know, is okay, but when you make it that people have to do it this way and everything's this way, the total bill at the end is, you know, you're looking at plus 35 yeah. just to be in Ontario. Plus on top of the purse and everything that you'd pay normally. That's, that's correct. Now, my question to you is now, this is one joke I, I've thrown out there a few times. So you have a fight in Ontario. you got to fly in all the commission, pay for their hotel, pay for any sort of room service. When you go to Quebec, they seem to drive themselves down, bring a juice box and a chicken salad sandwich. And and that's no dig because I love my juice box and my chicken salad sandwich. But, you know, do you do you have to pay for, for lodging or anything for the Quebec commission? Or is that all taken care of in your in your promotional fee? No, you know, the way it works with the Quebec Athletic Commission, you know, you pay your fee, there's a certain percentage yeah. that they charge, and that's it, you know, and your fee is, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's like 2540 yeah. 2540 and they're amazing to work with, super helpful, understanding, you know, a big shout out to Michel Hamlang, because I know he's going to check this out, and... Uh, you know, him and all the guys working with him, you know, John DeVille, all of those guys, Sil uh, Sylvie Lecuyer, yeah. you know, all these people on the Quebec Athletic Commission are amazing, amazing to work with. I'm not saying the Ontario people are not amazing to work with. Just more expensive to work I'm with. I'm just saying they're more expensive yeah. to work with. Now, you know, it, it, let, let's take one last look at this. So, you know, you have all your, your normal refs from, uh, from Quebec. You know, we, we won't throw too many names. We, you know, Mr. Chartier, we still love you even as much as we dog on you. You know, they, they do a phenomenal job. You know, besides the Jesse Gross uh, last fight at Rack, but we'll, we'll leave that one alone. Um, you know, they always do a phenomenal job. Every, every show they have, there's very rarely a mistake. And you have Ontario where you do have to pay to bring in a big John McCarthy. You have to bring in a experienced UFC ref. Um, obviously, that's a huge 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 price tag on top of that do you find it's a difference when you have a, an experienced ufc ref versus you know what you'd get in quebec yes and no you, you know what it, it's like anything yeah. no matter where you go you're going to have your good calls going to have your bad calls people make mistakes yeah. you know we're humans you know like i i don't think people take that into consideration enough uh big john's going to make mistakes eve Levine's going to make mistakes herb dean's going to make mistakes and you know what 
the guys in the Quebec Athletic Commission, they're going to make mistakes. You know, no matter where you go, that's going to happen. You know, but however, I know that I know the reason the Ontario Athletic Commission is doing it is because if the UFC, the most major promotion in the world, is using these these referees, then the belief is okay. Well, if they make a call, then it it's, it's from the highest level, all right. And it's you know what you can't argue with it. And and I believe that's a mentality, you know, at least that I've I've spoke with some of the representatives from the commission. It, it does it does make a lot of sense. The only thing I, w- I would like to say on that is I do think they need to make some space for some young Ontario refs to, to show up on some of those Ontario cards, um, so we can start getting some more experienced referees in Ontario. You know, um, I know they are working on it. Yeah, but yeah, I I've spoken to Ken several times. Like I know they are working on getting people trained up. There, you know, a lot of the inspectors that are in the back are new green guys that are coming up. So it is happening, you know, even a friend of mine, Tony Isaacs, you know what, he's, he's in there too, I've seen him in the back as well, you know, he's getting trained up, he's from Ontario, he's, uh, you know, involved with the OJA. We just want it to happen now. We live in the internet age. We're an internet site. We want it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you have any other thoughts, any other, you know, you know, shout-outs you want to give out on this card coming up? Because, you know, a lot of great fights. Another one I want to, uh, you know, quickly, quickly touch on is uh, Brent Dewsbury versus, uh, is it Chris Saint-Jean? Yeah. Chris Saint-Jean has been on absolute tear. I think this will be his uh, third or fourth fight in about eight weeks. Just, you know, killing everyone. Brant Dewsbury, everyone knows in our sights, a tough guy fighting at the Canadian uh, Martial Arts Center with Lee Mean. You know, that's, that's going to be a great fight. But is there, is there anything else out there that, you know, really piquing your interest for this card? Uh, definitely Derek Bowes is making his yeah. debut. You know, young, with him. Yeah, young gun, young gun from Ottawa. Huge, uh, huge jiu-jitsu background. Uh, and it's just he's he's a gamer, you know. I would definitely watch him. Uh, he's he's coming. He's going, he's coming out. He's yeah. going to be coming hard, you know. And of course, uh, Mustafa Khalil as yeah. well. You know, like I can't you know talk about the show without talking about Mustafa. We did an interview with him. It's getting massive hits. You know, his his character. Yeah. He loves is, being on uh, camera. That guy loves being. You on know, camera. his care. It's good for a promoter. Yeah. You know, it's it, it, people love to see him, love to watch him, love to hear what he's talking about. You know. And uh, I'm really excited to see him fight. And, uh, you know, I know uh, Kyle Prepolek as well. Yeah. You know, it, it should be a very, very good matchup. Now, you know, uh, touching on Mustafa there quickly, fighting at a Ronin MMA, uh, you know, really no more for their jiu-jitsu, I find. But I got to say, the guy has unbelievable boxing footwork and head movement fans. Unbelievable. You know, look out for that fight because that, that's going to be another really, really good one. So before we let you go, is there any family, friends, sponsors you'd like to give a shout-out to tonight? I would like to shout out to Street Soldier. Yeah, been a supporter for you know of Rec MMA since the beginning. Great gear, great you know. Gear. Uh, believe in the brand. Yeah, I think it's great. They support so many Ontario fighters, and I'm all about you know the local the local support. You know, especially in our province when we need it. And these are some of the guys who are doing it. So check them out. Beautiful. Now, so it's going to be October 28th at the Casino de Lac Lamy in, in uh, Gatineau, Quebec. Are we going to be on the Score.com for an online pay per view? Maybe. Maybe. All right, let's have our fingers crossed. <laughs> In the past, sometimes the feed works, sometimes the feed doesn't work. We'll see you Friday night. You want to know what? A lot of the time, though, the problem is with the sound. And as much as I love hearing more Ronaldo, Robin Black, and John Ramdeen, as long as you can see the fights, that's all that matters. Anyway, fans, big win, Don Wilson, Nick Castiglia, Top MMA News.